Good morning, everybody. We have a packed hour for you here on Local 4 Plus and click on Detroit.com. Thank you for joining us. Boy, do we ever. We are going to spend quite a few minutes here on Local 4 Plus talking about school security and funding for that. Last night and this morning, we've talked about uh, the stories from Plymouth Canton School District and what's going on there. The new security camera system that's infused with artificial intelligence to spot threats. That camera system is able to detect a person approaching that may have a weapon, usually before even a person can. It detects it immediately, and then the building goes immediately into lockdown. Announcements are made, alerts are sent out to teachers and staff, and an app automatically. The Ply Plymouth Canton School District is one of two in the country that is beta testing the software from Motorola. I thought this was going to be a game changer in, in terms of being able to identify these things before they get to our building. But when I saw it work and I saw how quickly we got the alert, that's when I knew it was a game changer. And I knew that this is going to make schools safer. That is really encouraging to hear. And while that is incredible, there's an important follow up question here. How can districts afford it? Absolutely. And that's where Nick Monticelli picks it back up to try and get some of those answers with two of our guests here in studio with Nick this morning. Good that's morning, right. Nick. The, the guests, the answers came right to us. Dr. Monica Merritt, the superintendent of the Plymouth Canton School District, Representative Matt Kelzar, who is the chair of the House Education Committee and just coincidentally happens to represent Plymouth as well. Yes. Um, you know, we talked about this, this grant and $1.9 million, which was a partnership with the state and Motorola. You were lucky to get that money, money that other districts are drooling over. Uh, what's your advice when another district is looking at technology that you have now and say, well, I want my kids to be safe like that too? Yes. Well, first of all, thank you, Nick, for the opportunity to come today to talk about this work that we're doing um, in Plymouth Canton Community Schools to really support the safety of our students and our staff. And when we think about how we have envisioned our plan moving forward, it's been about powerful partnerships mm. with our local community. We know we value safety. It's our number one priority priority in Plymouth Canton schools. So with our local community support, reaching out and sharing our stories, when we had that uh, interaction with Motorola, we are now able to beta test some of their AI work um, in our camera systems, and that's been a powerful partnership working alongside our state legislators. We're so fortunate to have Representative Colazar yeah. right over the, here. With the chair the of the state. Education Committee, <laughs> right? To really talk friends in high places. Friends in high places, <laughs> but really talking about the whole state of Michigan and knowing the importance of educating the whole child. And for our students, they come to school to learn. Mm -hmm. It's our job to keep them safe. So having the resources really to support that work. And we've been really, really proud and grateful for the flexibility that we're given because all school districts are different. We have 16,000 students in Plymouth Canton Community Schools. I get anxiety just thinking about the number of kids that you have. Literally something that keeps me up at night yeah. as not just a superintendent but as a parent yeah. is to ensure that I in return every single student home safely the yeah. way that their parents gave them to us. Going back to, to Motorola, that yes. was essentially a, a partnership, a friendship that already existed and then the conversation about this technology kind of got you down this path of, of being a beta test site? As we were really chasing and researching best practices for our camera systems, we wanted to make sure that all of our systems, our communication devices really talked together. So yeah. we found the system of Vigilon, we began that relationship with Motorola through um, our integration of their technology gotcha. and then we began the conversations around how can we really get better in this space and utilize the most advanced technology to keep our students safe. Gotcha. Okay, let's look at the money man here for a second here. <laughs> <laughs> we can put you on appropriations, we can put you on whatever committee, committee you need to be, uh, but it's ironic that just last week and early this week you signed a couple of bills with the governor that does help put more funding into the school systems. Can you talk about how that could help and how we probably need, need to do more? Absolutely. Absolutely. So this really all started back in 2023 where the state of Michigan was uh, given $330 million from the federal government and that was from COVID for school safety and mental health and it was a use it or lose it situation so we used $330 million. Follow that up this year just last week the governor signed $150 million additional dollars to school safety and mental health so we've been able to um, fund 
um, school safety and mental health to the tune of almost half a billion dollars. And to your point, it's not enough, but it's definitely a really good start. These are historic investments in the last two years. And we had talked earlier, and what's unique about this money is that the districts are able to do with it what they please. Because as you can attest to, every district is different in terms of what they need, right? Absolutely. In Plymouth Canton, you've got 6,000 kids on the same campus at the high school level, but that's going to look different from a rural district or from an urban district. We want to make sure that school districts have that flexibility flexibility they need to keep their students and staff safe and make sure they can address any mental health needs that they need to address. You know, what's interesting is that, you know, in your role on the education committee, you spend a lot of your time looking at curriculum, you know, and, and test scores and, and trying to get students up to, up to snuff in terms of how they're performing ac academically. But safety and security and mental health realistically affects all of that. You and I have had that conversation that if, if a student doesn't feel safe, they're not going to learn. So do you have those kinds of conversations at your level where you recognize that if we want these kids to succeed, we have to make them safe and we have to find the money to do that? Absolutely. For a student to be successful and to learn, you have to make sure that the most basic needs are met. School safety, mental health, also we have universal school meals as well because you want to make sure no child is hungry when they're in class either. So when you think about addressing student hunger, student safety, student mental health, you are addressing the most basic foundational needs to make sure they can have a successful school career. So in terms of funding then, what can a parent, what can a district, what can a teacher do to help convince some of your colleagues that while the money that you've just signed into law helps, it's still not enough and it may never be enough, but we have to put more towards it. The number one thing anybody can do is contact their state legislator and let them know. Is somebody I want listening? To do when I make that phone call, somebody actually can answer the phone? So at the state level, it's important to point out, for example, my office, there's three of us. There's myself and two staff. Okay. It's not a, a major operation with 50 people, 100 people. When you call your state legislator, there's probably only three of them there, and that includes the legislator. So yes, it is absolutely being listened to. If you email, it is absolutely being read. I often will surprise constituents and just call them back myself, and they always say, I can't believe you're the one calling me. <laughs> Why not? You're my constituent. Right. So yeah, it's very important to reach out to your state legislator and let them know. Make this a priority. Yeah. Um, we had talked a few weeks ago when I visited your school yes. about the system and how great it is to have, but the maintenance is going to cost something and the upkeep is going to cost something. How do you find money in your budget to maintain a system that was so expensive at the onset? Yes, um, that's a great question. When we look at the initial investment and what we received uh, from the state, we were able to get the software, um, but we also have to continue to sustain right. that. And so we continue to work on partnerships and prioritizing. If we say that school safety is our number one priority, we have to continue to align our resources mm -hmm. in order to uh, support that in yeah. the long term. Continuing to engage our lawmakers and Lansing. Bag your lawmakers. Bag, Engage advocate. means bag. That's right. <laughs> you don't have, have to bag. To, we know. We definitely have to advocate and really show the results of this work that we're doing. Mm. You know, threats. Our world, we're evolving. So as schools, we have to evolve along with it. And we need to be proactive and stay in front of it. We talk about safety and security, and we can't not talk about mental health. We're in a mental health crisis. That's our what students I wanted to, are anxious. I, I wanted to bring that up, too, yes. because, again, you had made the point that, uh, and this is my last question, that a lot of times, unfortunately, those threats are coming within our schools now. How can we address the mental health, both from your level and at a state level, to, to try, we're never going to fix everything, but to try to at least make a dent in this problem? Yes. First of all, we've realized in Plymouth Canton you have to remove the stigma. We have to talk about it. Uh -huh. It's okay. So we want to make sure that we have trained adults. We've been able to increase our counselors, our behavior specialists, our social workers, our school psychologists, um, really creating pathways and trusted adults for students to talk in a proactive manner, connecting them to resources within the community because that is important as well. Continuing again to advocate with our uh, legislators to continue to fund so we can sustain these partnerships and these supports long term. Right. We want to make sure that a student always has a trusted adult. You see something, you say something. Yeah. That's okay because we have to empower our young people to help us keep them safe as Ta well. Tanya has given me a hard wrap, but I do have a, a 10 second question sure. for you. Same thing. Is, is there a stigma in that conversation in Lansing or, or are we open to having conversations about funding mental health issues properly? We're very open to having those conversations. Also, I was a teacher before I was a state legislator, so I know firsthand that the best way Lansing can be supportive of our schools is to be a resource to them. So always listening to our schools, listening to what their needs are, and then acting um, accordingly to make sure that we're supporting them to make sure all kids here in Michigan are successful. Gotcha. Okay, Representative Matt Cole is our
start, Dr. Monica Mayer. Thank you so much for coming in early on a Friday morning. Uh, Jason Ronda, we could have this conversation for, for, for three hours, honestly. And yes. we should, and that was a really good start. Absolutely. Yeah. Continuing conversation yeah. for sure. Thank you, Nick.